Don't break my heart, okay? Okay. Can I ask you a favor? What is it? I hear someone can use a hug. I'm not leaving. Okay, let's talk about it. Previously on 10 Things I Hate About You. So before we begin, I just want to make it known that this one hurts. Like, actually hurts. Imagine little old me re-watching the movie, one of my all-time favourites by the way, and then discovering there was a series. And like, oh, like an idiot, I just started watching it and got all the way to the final episode to find out that it got cancelled and they left me on a fucking cliffhanger. A cliffhanger, guys. Oh my god, you can it from oh my god. I was late discovering the series and this was like my first experience of something like this and I swear this was my villain origin story. I am still triggered thinking about it. Like how dare they do this to me? <sighs> Don't get me wrong, it wasn't the best thing ever. My attachment to the movie is what basically did it for me. As a lover of the romance, um, I think one of the biggest pulls for me with this show was the love stories. On one hand, you have this healthy, stable, wholesome, adorable, healthy um, thing with Joey and Bianca. Like they are, they communicate, they are so innocent and wholesome. And the way he just affirms her, and makes her feel safe and comfortable in the relationship, is just adorable. It melts my heart. Oh, I'm so single. I'm worried everything's gonna change. Five. Oh. The only thing the show's gonna change is my address and hair color. Not the way I feel about you. I love you, Bianca. Whether I'm in San Diego, New York, or Japan. Apparently, they go cuckoo for blondes in Japan. Wait. Did you just say that you love me? Duh. Oh my God. I love you too. Then you have the passion and the um, the tension and the I don't know. Some people say this insecurity in romance doesn't work for them, but for me, I don't know. I kind of find it exciting, toxic, I know. But you have the will they, won't they thing of um, Kat and Patrick, which again pulls me in. Like, will they, won't they? Will he get his shit together and ask her out? Will he take her seriously? Will Will he let her in? Will, she, will they finally admit their feelings for each other? I'm. I was eating up. I'm here for it. Ugh. Stay away from my girlfriend. Okay. I do have a problem with you seeing other guys. Good. So we're exclusive. No, I'm gonna see other people. I just don't want you to. <laughs> As you can tell, guys, I'm single. <laughs> No, but how do I play for both teams and I'm still single? I've had enough. I've had enough. Um, ciao. Anyway, so... And then Dawn and um, Cameron slide in the game in the last few minutes. But they are doing a little something, son. You know what? I'm kind of here for it. Yeah, I support. I couldn't live without you. Aww. Recite it to me again. <laughs> Hark! My Dawn, you are the sweetest treat in the candy store. I've tasted your sugar and I want some more. You're so hot, you melt my heart. Lips sweet and delicious like a mixed fruit tart. You're cuter than Bambi, an adorable baby fawn. You light up my days. My very own Dawn. <laughs> and outside of the romances, it was really nice and fun to watch these characters grow. Um, to see them develop and just to watch the beautiful relationship between the two sisters who couldn't be anything alike but I don't know come together when they need to, when they need each other the most also the fact that you had basically a few teen stars that I was already familiar with we have Lindsay Shaw from Ned Declassified School Survivor Guide we have um, Megan Martin from Camp Rock and Nicholas Braun from um, Disney Channel. And we also have L Larry Miller from um, the movie as well. But yeah, as a huge fan of the movie, I was attached to this one way or the other. I feel like they didn't give a chance. I genuinely believe that it could have been a cult classic given the opportunity, but no one talks about it. I feel like I'm the only one who actually watched the show. Like the movie is literally one of the best teen movies and it's not even close a cult classic the performance and the insane chemistry between julia styles and the late heath ledger no something real something no one else knows okay you're sweet and 
and sexy. And completely hot for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> shit, that makes shit that make your pussy throb right there. <laughs> Truly superior. Just look at the material. Ugh. This role is the ultimate definition of a heartthrob. I don't like to give men too much praise, but this was truly white man excellence. Every time I watch it, I'm reminded of this tweet by um British best-selling author Bolu, who says that he might have been the last true white boy heartthrob, and she made several points. He was effortlessly able to be soft, sweet, sexy, give bad boy energy, be vulnerable, funny, charismatic, dashing, all at the same time. We don't get that anymore. We don't. Not to this level, like guys, ugh. You guys don't understand how much I adore this movie. And I say this authentically, truly a cinematic masterpiece. The plot wasn't anything special or unique, but execution just takes it. Oh, she's taking it. Just before we begin, I just wanna say hi, welcome to my channel. For those who are new here, I talk about my favorite TV shows and movies, giving commentary and recaps and um, unhinged videos. So if that's not like your kind of thing, make sure to subscribe and yeah, let's talk about it. But yeah, welcome to my recap of 10 things I hate about you, the series. Please let me know in the comments if you actually watched it as well. I feel like I'm genuinely the only one who watched it. I swear, did anyone else? In terms of the plot, the show takes a different route. Instead of having Cameron as the new kid, it has Kat and Bianca as the new kids who just moved from Ohio to California, which I thought was an interesting um, change. I'll give the show credit where it's due. I like that it stayed pretty faithful to the source material in terms of the characters. So I'm gonna give you guys a little breakdown of the main characters um, you need to know about. I was told the spots aren't assigned. Oh no, no, they are assigned by Charles Darwin. So why don't you and your dinosaur head to the back with the rest of the extinct species? First, we have Kat Stratford. Kat is a typical progressive white feminist, very independent, with very strong opinions about everyone and everything. I feel like in this though, she initially has more of an interest in Patrick than her movie counterpart. And I'm sorry, but she is insufferable for a huge chunk of the show as well. But that's expected from lead characters as we've come to accept. Are you going out about Cuba again? Me no quiero escuchar to that. No. They're making us wear uniforms. What? No. No, no, I finally clawed my way to the top so that I can have the honor of wearing this cute little outfit to school. They can't take that away from me. This is inhumane. I can't believe she thinks it's okay to say these things out loud. Then we have her younger sister, Bianca Stratford. And Bianca is a bit more different to the movie counterpart. In the movie, Bianca already has a status of being a popular girl and well-liked. But in the TV show, because Bianca is new to the school, she has to build her reputation. And most of the series follows her on her social climbing agenda to be um, a cheerleader and to basically be popular. I was just showing your friend with the disturbingly deep voice who looks much older than 17 what could happen if he's not careful. And by careful, I don't mean use a condom. I mean keep it in your pants. Then we have Patrick Verona, a rough-edged outsider and rebel, a quiet, brooding loner who is Kat's main love interest for the, for the series. At the start, I wasn't really thinking the actor because he looked too old for this role. Like, I was thinking, who is this 30-year-old man among quote-unquote high schools? And to be fair, it's hard to live up to what Heath Ledger did with the role, but with less by his eyes, I can, yeah, he kind of works, he's all right. Don't worry, I'll never tell. Not unless they tickle me. <laughs> what? We also have Cameron James, an awkward sophomore who's in love with Bianca. He falls for her at first sight. I feel like he's, he's quite similar to the movie counterpart, but I don't know, he's a bit too cartoony in the series for me. Most of the characters feel somewhat realistic, but he gives too much Disney, too much Disney energy. It still works though, so yeah. I'm a good guy. I'm sorry. Okay then. But just think about this. If your friends were really your friends, would they make you choose? I can't believe you didn't pick me. We have Joey Donner, who I'd say is significantly more different to his film counterpart as well. In the movie, he's a typical rich teen villain, arrogant, dumb, good-looking prick. But in the TV show, he's more of a lovable sweetheart that's just a little dumb. He starts off as Chastity's boyfriend, 
but slowly becomes Bianca's main love interest and he's such a sweetheart. He's a he's a great boyfriend. I loved them. I loved watching their chemistry together. It was cute. Like really innocent. Who are their applicants? I am this school's Tony Soprano. Bianca! Oh, we are taking them down. Oh yeah. Then we have Chastity Church, who has a more important role in the TV series that she did in the movie. It was that much difference that I didn't even clock that <laughs> they, she had a movie counterpart. Basically, she's the most popular girl in school, a typical rich, mean head cheerleader girl. So Bianca basically causes up to her and becomes her friend to fulfill her social climate agenda. However, over the series, we do see them build a genuine friendship, which is nice to see. All right, look, it's the first day of school, so remember the most important thing. Don't get pregnant. Dad! Dad? I'm just saying, boys want to put a baby in you. Are we clear, Bianca? Well, they'd have to do it in vitro since I can't date until Cat does. And then we have their dad, Dr. Walter Stratford. Ah, uh, he's... An interesting one. In the movie, it wasn't as bad, but in the TV show, he is so creepy. He's overprotective, but he crosses different levels of overprotective. It was weird. It was weird. But he's the only actor that reprises his role from the movie uh, onto the TV show. I don't really have much to say about the fella besides the overprotectiveness, but um, it is nice that towards the end of the series, he kind of meets someone and opens his heart to love again. But yeah, because it's only one season, I can break down everything that happens in each episode and give you a more cohesive um, recap. Basically, the series follows Kat and Bianca as they navigate their new high school, the popular crowd, boys, and, the over and their overprotective father. And I get being scared of STDs and teen pregnancy, but again, we cross some pretty weird lines. It's actually, I don't know, man. Weird. But yeah, let's get into it. I then deconstructed her profile and used that data to carefully plot out our first encounter so as to easily befriend and beguile her. Beguile? Big word, Shakespeare. So the pilot begins with the sisters on their way to the first day of school at the new high school, Padua High. And this scene in the car kind of gives us a good introduction and a summary of the family personalities and their dynamic with each other. Kat's day isn't off to a great start as she gets into an incident with Chastity over a parking spot and ends up ruining her car. This sends them both to the principal's office where we learn that not only is Chastity feared by the students but also feared by the staff as the father is the superintendent so they try to keep her happy at all times. But here at Padua High, the man? is chastity the daughter of the school board superintendent this is a public school where every student deserves to be treated with dignity and respect <laughs> no that's private school meanwhile bianca's plan is off to a great start when she orchestrates a kind of meet you between her and chastity and they seem to get along which has to even suggest that she tries off the cheerleading team however when chastity learns that Kat and bianca are sisters she loses interest in any kind of friendship with and bianca that's until Kat gets a spot as the yearbook editor and threatens to use only bad pictures of Chastity if she doesn't um, kind of work things out with her sister Bianca. She ends up giving her the mascot spot instead. We also meet Cameron and his best friend Michael. Cameron seems to instantly fall in love with Bianca at first sight, but when he sees her bonding with Chastity, they kind of work together to try and improve his status at school by throwing the first part of the year just so he can have a genuine chance to be with her. Also. Kat befriends a loner called Mandela and finds herself drawn to a mysterious Patrick. They try and create this mysterious vibe with him. And I think that's one of the reasons I really didn't like him because it just came off really cringe and creepy. He was just staring and didn't talk. This was awkward, I didn't like it. Okay. But overall, the episode hits um, the right tones, gives us a good introduction to the world and the characters. And they use music, um, they use the same music from the movie, which again, like, pulls out the nostalgia. So I would say uh, Chef Kisses, great first episode. Your booty needs to pop like that white head on your chin. Ah. Ah. Look, someone who doesn't look like Jessica Simpson having a seizure. In the second episode, Bianca tries to impress Chastity by arranging a fundraiser event, a carnation sale, for the cheerleading squad as they need new uniforms. However, Chastity gets jealous over Bianca's success and hides the flowers that she received. When um, Bianca finds out, Cameron convinces her to stand up to Chastity, but she pushes out. It is? Well, if you send me a flower, that means other people may have too. Okay, ouch. Chastity must have thrown them away. I knew it. She's still upset about finding me and Joey in the closet. Yeah, it was upsetting. But destroying someone's flowers, that's low. Even for a popular girl, Kat was right. She is a teenage long duck dog. I'm sorry, who? The dictator of North Korea. 
It's okay, I didn't know either. Cameron hopes that by sending Bianca a carnation, she will finally notice him as a potential love interest. And spoiler, she doesn't. Also, Kat is um, surprisingly disappointed when Patrick doesn't send her one. And I just love that for her because she's delusional and self-involved at this point because there's nothing that much been between them. Sorry. She's, she's just like me, for real. She also gets a creepy unwanted admirer in this episode and thinks that Patrick is the one who beat him up and got him to apologise, but it's later revealed that it was actually Mandela, her only friend. I would have been on time tonight, but I had to save a life tonight. What happened? After the game, we decided to grab something to eat and this guy started choking and I had to shove my eyelash curler down his throat in order to save his life. Way to go, McGruber. Daddy... Maybe one day I'll become a doctor so I can save lives like you every day. Oh, that's sweet. Now blow into this. See? All clear. Now, late is late. We'll see how long you're grounded when your test results get back. Kat, go with your sister. I need you to make sure... It's her urine. I know the drill. This family is so twisted. In the third episode, Bianca overhears plans for a party and enlists Cameron's help to get the address. I need to show you something. Careful, that's borderline sexual harassment. Oh, borderline? Clearly I'm not working hard enough. Also, Kat finds out that her and Patrick like the same band and he invites her to a concert. Both Trafford sisters sneak out of the house, but neither of, the, but neither of their nights turned out as planned. It turns out that Bianca had the wrong address and though things started off well for Patrick and Kat with some flirting and almost kiss, when she steps away for a brief second to answer a call from Bianca, he turns attention to another girl, leaving her disappointed. She leaves to pick up Bianca and Cameron, and when they go home, they see that their dad found out that Bianca snuck out. Cups. Dad already knew you snuck out. There's nothing I could do. So we both grew up and I'm the only one that gets screwed? I don't think so. Dad, there's something you should know. Wanting not to go down alone, Bianca threatens Kat of revealing a secret of a fake ID and lying about where she went to the dad, but she ends up keeping her secret. What about her? How about cut her some slack? I wouldn't drive her to that party tonight, so she snuck out. She just wanted to have some fun. Yeah, but you don't want to have fun. When the dad basically calls Kat a basic boring bitch, she comes clean to her dad and she gets in trouble too. This is a nice, cute moment of the sisters bonding and getting along, which we don't really get often in the series. I need to change my image. I've narrowed it down to getting a lip stud, dyeing my hair pink, or dressing like a pussycat doll. <laughs> no face piercing. No alternative hair colors. No put what's a pussycat doll? They're multi-hyphenates. Strippers. Who sang? Loser! <laughs> In the fourth episode, Kat and Patrick get into a fight when he litters on school property, and they end up having to pick a little up together as punishment. During this, Kat ends up stabbing his foot and then going through his bag like a crazy person, causing some more friction in the flirtationship slash developing friendship relationship. Chastity, um, I was a little sick last week. Are tangellos like a slang word for something? <laughs> Sorry ladies, but this story is NC-17. I can't serve it to minors. <sighs> Just because I'm from Ohio doesn't mean I'm some naive little farm girl. <laughs> My neighborhood was pretty sketch. You wouldn't believe the number of prostitutes we had hanging around our cul-de-sac. Meanwhile, Bianca decides that it's time to get rid of her squeaky clean image and starts the rumour that she's dating an older man. This rumour kind of spirals and um, the older man is assumed to be a teacher at the school. This eventually reaches the faculty and he gets in trouble, but it's revealed that he was actually seeing the students as he's taken up in handcuffs, so she never has to come clean. She did not be with her? No! No! Rot in jail! Also, um... With some fashion tips for Michael, Cameron tries to change his look to appeal to Bianca, but he's dismayed when he finds out that she actually thinks he's gay. I'm so lucky to have met you. You're my first GBF. <laughs> what, a GBF? Gay best friend. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Do I know you? Cameron James? We've been going to the same school since first grade. Cameron. Cameron James. Cameron James. Oh, Bianca's gay friend. Man, I, I really admire you for busting stereotypes. I'm actually trying to do the same thing. I want to show the world that straight guys can be models in the same way that you're trying to show the world that the gay guys don't have to have six-pack abs. <laughs> in the fifth episode, Kat begins to feel like a hypocrite as an environmentalist due to how much emission her car creates and tries to convert her car to a biodiesel fuel by enrolling in auto shop class. 
she's made fun of by all the boys and they even start to wager all betting against her she joins and bets for herself careful that money could buy you a bunch of tampons <laughs> <laughs> And she ends up proving them wrong, winning the bets, but also kind of gaining Patrick's respect, quote unquote. Meanwhile, Chastity makes a deal with the eager Bianca that still wants to be on the cheerleading squad, that if she helps um, raise Joey's chemistry grade, so he can have, so he can hold his position in the, on the football team, Chastity will allow Bianca on the cheerleading squad, which she does eventually by the end of the episode. I look at like this episode because we start, we start to see a growing friendship and bond between Bianca and Joey. It's just so sweet and innocent, them talking about dream books and shit. To be the first male supermodel. And no, I don't count Tyson Beckford. He doesn't have a fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> While Cameron is still on his side trying to figure out how to get Bianca's attention, again, in these early episodes, his presence seems mighty relevant. But bear with us because he does come into the plot and becomes more involved later on. And he has such a major part in season two. And that's why I'm still so pissed up that they cancelled it. How the fuck would you show me something if I couldn't have it then? Who do you think is hotter? Jake Gyllenhaal or Ryan Reynolds? Jakey. Ryan's too chiseled. You could cut yourself on his abs. In the sixth episode, Bianca and her friend Dawn ask Cameron's help in setting up a webcam type show to raise money um, so they can afford to hang out with Chastity. They realise that they can make more money they play into like, this lesbian fantasy that teenage boys are supposed to have, but end up getting caught by Bianca's dad and have to shut it down. What exactly do you think those guys are doing while they're watching you? Oh, ew, ew, ew! Also in this episode, Kat complains about her English teacher's easy grading by shitting on her friend Mandela's um, work, but things will go according to plan as it turns out she did the assignment wrong. Kat, astronauts on the International Space Station can see that you're a feminist. I wanted to learn something I didn't know. Your essay was predictable, preachy, and quite frankly shallow. Here we learn more about Kat's flaws um, as she's quite self-centered and very self-involved. It made me realize how much my paper like Hey, we were talking about me. Right. Also, Patrick notices Cameron's attempt to get Bianca's attention and offers him advice. Again, another filler episode is kind of boring, but we're kind of get we're getting close to the good stuff now. You're not all clingy and needy. We can just make out and doesn't have to be this whole big thing. Right. Right. Because I'm a total slut. But I have a mind of my own. Episode 7 is where things start to finally get a bit interesting. It begins with the local students being evacuated at the high school due to a bushfire um, emergency. Bianca tries to use the crisis as yet another opportunity to try and bond and win over Chastity. But this initially backfires when, sh when Chastity proves to be unbearably difficult. You are such a bitch! What did you say to me? You heard me. You are a manipulative, conniving, mean little shrew of a person and I am sick of taking your crap. Can't you see that nobody likes you? Get her, Jay. She finally ends up turning her about herself and Chastity respects this and they finally start to form a real friendship. That's so sweet and I like you when you're not being whiny and insecure. Meanwhile, Patrick and Kat have a flirtation thing, have the usual flirtation thing going on throughout the episode and finally kiss but when he attempts to compliment her it backfires and they again fall out to apologize he returns to the house to get her mom's vinyls which are very important to her so they, so they can't get lost in the fire this was a pretty sweet cute moment and we see um your dad meet a potential love interest i think they kind of hook up patrick don't you dare you take my sister to fall flame Excuse her, she was dropped on her head as an infant, now she has this episode. Let's get you medicated. Look, deep, deep down beneath my sister's crusty exoskeleton, she's a soft spot for you. So in the eighth episode, Bianca is excited to be asked to the screw dance by the captain of the soccer team. But when Cameron overhears him bragging about his plans to seduce Bianca, he's, he revolves to sabotage her date and comes to her rescue, saving her night. And this is like hella manipulative because he knows what he's doing. Like, he could have just been honest with her. And that's why I kind of hate the nice guy trope um, on screen. When Bianca finds out about Cameron's sabotage, they have a falling out. But I did it to protect you, Bianca. Protect me? You ruined my first date and I can never have a first date again. No, listen, you can't trust him. Can't trust him? I can't trust you. I thought we were friends. We are friends. 
Meanwhile, with persuasion from Bianca, because she isn't allowed to go to the dance unless Kat does, Patrick ends up asking Kat to the dance. They actually, they actually have a pretty good time, but things don't end well when he wrongly gets arrested for weed possession in the bathroom during the dance. You want some? It's medical. I have early stage glaucoma. Abandoning Kat. Also, I swear I've seen this dress everywhere on like all TV shows. Is it just me? But this dress has been on almost all like teen TV shows. They must share a whales or something. So cliche. Dad goes out of town, you throw a wild party, someone breaks our Fabergé egg, and then we have to turn this place into a brothel to pay for it. Sounds like an awesome weekend. In the ninth episode, when their dad goes out of town, Bianca convinces a reluctant cat to allow her to throw a party. Patrick shows up and tries to explain what happened, but she isn't trying to hear it. Red flags from you ever since I met you. In fact, you look like communist China. <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? It's like talking to a brick wall. You make up your mind and that's that. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Sick of everyone calling her too serious and being boring, Kat decides to let loose and get drunk, becoming the life of the party to everyone's surprise. She even drunk calls Patrick at some point. At the party, Chastity and Joey get into a fight because she gets to flirt with other guys and Bianca is there to comfort him. Cameron also gets drunk and finally confesses his love for Bianca but when she rejects him, this causes them to fall out. So all this time we've been friends, you've liked me? No, I've loved you. When the party gets out of hand and Kat refuses to help, Joey steps up and helps Bianca get everyone out. Afterwards, they share a moment and end up sharing a kiss but I quickly agree that it was a mistake. That didn't happen. I know, but if it did, it was amazing. This episode ends with them being caught as their dad left the hidden camera in the house to spy on them. Anyway, Janelle has mono so bad, she has to eat through a tube. Oh my god, is she gonna be okay? She'll be fine. It's her own fault. She'll kiss anything. In a 10th episode, Chastity lets Bianca know that she and Joey have broken up. Also that she'll be coming, also that she'll officially be coming a cheerleader as one of them is sick and she finally gets to be on the squad. Just, ju but this is just as the school is rolling out new policies, introducing metal detectors, uniforms and searches. This basically gives Kat a social justice warrior boner and she tries to rally the school to rebel and protest with help from Mandela and Patrick. When things seem to be going nowhere, she reaches out to Chastity for help and Chastity blackmails her dad and has the uniform policy revoked. And though Kat still wants to fight, considering, considering this a small win, she is talked down by her dad. When Patrick sees security searching his locker and going through his stuff, he walks out of school in protest, leaving his bag. Kat picks up his bag and follows him, while the principal threatens to suspend them. And I won't lie, this is like one of my favorite scenes of the series because it's kinda cute. I know it's bare minimum, or it's like, I don't know, it's not that much. I don't know, it just feels well earned. Hold my hair. Excuse me? That's what you said to me at your party. Right before you hurled. <laughs> also in this episode, after learning about um, their breakup, Joey and Bianca start seeing each other, though trying to resist at first. Chastity catches them kissing, but they didn't see the face of the girl who conf- Chastity catches them kissing, but because she didn't see the face of the girl, she confines her anger in Bianca and wants to work together to find out who she is and get revenge. All we have to do is review the footage and then we'll know who she is. Then- You'll help me destroy her, right? Sure! We told the establishment to stick it! Yeah, yeah, we're heroes. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's go in! Hell no. Oh, and I thought you were a tough guy. <laughs> I'm suspended. My dad is going to kill me! In the 11th episode, after leaving school without permission, Kat and Patrick are suspended, meaning that Kat will have to miss a test and get, and get an automatic zero. She's worried about how this zero grade might affect the college plans, so she sneaks in and takes the test, with help from Patrick, but they are caught by the principal. When Walter comes into school to defend Kat, he learns of Patrick's involvement in Kat's suspension and he gets angry and calls her a liar. A bit dramatic if you ask me, but we move. Here's that poor kid now. That poor, defenseless kid. Also, tired of sneaking around, Bianca finally confessed to Chastity that she was the one who's, who was kissing Joey. So, Patrick, tell me about your family. My dad's a tattoo artist. In fact, when he gets out of debt, he wants to open his own shop. He's kind of a dreamer. Oh, I see. 
And does your mom work? Yes, sir. Shh. Well, I guess you could call her a dancer. In the 12th episode, Walter insists that Kat invites Patrick over to dinner, hoping to scare Patrick away. Patrick agrees, but not before he and Kat con concoct a plan to scare Walter instead. Was that true about your parents? Just one of them. Meanwhile, Chastity demands that Bianca break up with Joey if she wants to stay on the squad and still be friends. At first, she thinks about doing it, but she changes her mind, deciding that her real friends would not never ask her to do that. I thought you guys were my friends. I broke up with Joey so we could stay friends. Aww. And then a second later, I got back together with him because I realized real friends would never make me choose between them and my totally hot, wonderful new boyfriend. By the end of the dinner date, Walter comes to terms with the fact that his daughter is growing up and allowed to make decisions on who she can date. I've actually come to see you, sir. It is my hope that you'll grant me permission to date your daughter. Here's my driving record, vaccination card, and a list of references. They can't be... Friends, family, or fake. I know, sir. Did you put him up to this? In the 13th episode, both Kat and Bianca have dinner dates with the boyfriends. Kat and Patrick do this thing that I found cute when I was younger, but now it just feels so childish and pathetic. Like, either fucking ask her on a date or shut up and keep it stepping. He even shows up with a, without a plan. Ugh, it drives me crazy. Before each boy um, heads off on their dates, Walter feels a need to discuss the horrors of childbirth to them. And again, it's this weird thing with virginity. I, I don't like it. On their dates, Bianca and Joey start off alright, but quickly, t but things quickly turn awkward and ends early when Joey learns that um, Bianca is still a virgin. Basically, before the dates, Bianca realized that Joey still thought that she hooks up with an older man, the teacher. So on the date, whenever he was touching her or trying to flirt with her, she would get uncomfortable or she would get uncomfortable or a bit nervous. Baby, what's wrong? Do you have any aspirin? I have a splitting virgin. He, she ended up blurting it out and he put an abrupt end to their date and ended it with a high five. And he later comes back and apologizes for freaking out and reassuring her about the relationship, which is adorable. I think they are so adorable. Kat and Patrick's date ends in a fight when Patrick wants to dine and dash. During the argument, Kat realizes she got food poisoning and is kind of okay with Patrick not paying for her meal. Both being single and alone, Cameron and Chastity run into each other in the cinemas and have a, like a little friend moment. Meat is not green, huh? If it is, probably shouldn't eat it. Don't mock. In the 14th episode, Kat wants to launch um, a campaign for Meatless Mondays and with the assistance of a new British student, William Blank, he gets passed by the student government. However, when he gets passed, it turns out that he was only supporting her to turn against the idea later so he could win the student president election. This also includes um, Gina Rodriguez and Niggas give me heebie jeebies. <laughs> Girl, why? I Loki can't look her the same anymore. Patrick Loki gets jealous when he sees Kat and Blank bonding and acts like a prick, but he makes things up to her by trying his first soy dog. Meanwhile, Bianca tries to find a girl for Cameron, giving her a makeover to fix their friendship, but it doesn't end well when the girl gets sick of pretending to be someone she's not. Loki hates how she has to glow up to be good enough for him when he is very, very, very mediocre. Like, at the start of the episode, the way she looked kind of matched him if we're keeping it real. The right reasons. I thought if you got excited about someone else, then you'd be happy and we could go back to being friends. And it worked. Yeah, right up until my complete and utter humiliation. But you felt something for Stacy, which means you're getting over me. They have a conversation and work things out and able to be friends again. Also, Walter tries out a new dating site and finds out that his date isn't who she said she was. Though it didn't go well, the experience made him realize that life goes on and he's genuinely ready to meet someone new. I might still win. Oh, sweetie. Mothers don't let daughters embarrass themselves. Just fake some sort of illness and meet me at the car. In the 15th episode, Bianca enters the Padua High Talent High School and decides to sing Kids of America, enjoying all the attention from her father. Feeling jealous, Kat joins his talent show with Cameron to one up Bianca, but it doesn't go well for her as she turns out to have stage fright. Afterwards, Kat and Bianca have a heart-to-heart -heart talk on the jealousy between them. When I do those things, people don't applaud, and Dad has never worn a stupid t-shirt with my name on it. Oh my God. You just admitted you're jealous of me. And Patrick helps Walter see how his bias is affecting the sister's relationship. My theory, she's jealous. Jealous? Of whom? 
Chastity and Bianca also get a chance to kind of make up when she's there for her more than um, Chastity's mother, which is kind of cute. Therapist, I thought... You thought what? I was going to my secret crack then so me and my baby mama could tat each other up? No. In the 16th episode, Kat is worried about Patrick's odd behaviour and recruits Cameron to help her spy on him. When she gets caught and they get into an argument, it's revealed that he's in therapy and having family issues. They have an honest conversation about how she feels about him and he opens up to her a little bit. Ugh. I love the trope of um, the guy putting up a front but eventually slowly opening up to the girl. I know cliche but I just think it's adorable because it's like, <laughs> yes, be soft with her, let her in. I eat that shit up. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just care about you, okay? God, I'm sorry, I'll stop. What do you want to know? Meanwhile, after watching the reality show The Biggest Poser, Joey wants to be a cast member, but Bianca worries that his goal may lead to an eating disorder and they have an intervention. They try to make it seem as if he doesn't, but Loki. What he's describing is disordered eating, so I don't know if that's correct. But again, this was back in like 2011, so things were obviously very different now. Obviously, things were very different, especially how we look at food and look at eating and look at what's healthy. Check my food log. If I'd eaten them, I would have made a notation in the bad carbs column. See? He asked me out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So what'd you say? What do you think I said? I don't know. I wasn't there. Are you gonna go? Why would I do that? Why wouldn't you? Here we have episode 17. And not gonna lie, it's probably one of my favourite, favourite episodes. Oh, I just love love. When Bianca and Joey seeks a second couple for a double date, she decides to set Cameron up with Dawn. But she gets jealous and masks it as concern when she realises that Dawn and Cameron might actually be connecting. Why are you obsessing over them? It's just weird. They're my best friends. It's like sixth grade all over again when Jojo Riverton and Amy Gardella went to Wild Water Kingdom without me. I know it's not the same. But I'll go to Wild Water Kingdom with you. Ugh, isn't Joey just the sweetest? Like one of my favorite himbos for sure. And like finally he gets a worthy love interest and can stop being so desperate and pathetic. Ugh. Katz becomes upset when Patrick says the relationship is not exclusive and he and she can date whoever she wants. She accepts an invite from Blank. But when Patrick sees them on a date, he gets jealous and stalks them. Patrick and Blank get into a fight as they're leaving and he finally calls Kat his girlfriend. The way she smiles, I want to say it's cute again, because when I was young I found it cute, but this is like so bare minimum. Stand up. Let him ask you properly. Not just say it like a throw of comments. Ew. Stay away from my girlfriend. Okay. I do have a problem with you seeing other guys. Good, so we're exclusive. No, I'm going to see other people. I just don't want you to. <laughs> but then this scene's got me because here I am smiling like a dickhead too. <sighs> also, Walter finds romance in the girls' school counselor. There's this scene where everyone is just getting with each other in the last moments of the episode, and I let Loki here for it. I don't know why, but I'm here for it. Just, I don't know, yeah. I mean, I do know why, but you know. I knew I'd get you eventually. You'd get me? Well, I'm about to, aren't I? Is that what this is? Your master plan to get me to sleep with you? I'm just some sex object? No, you talk way too much to be just a sex object. In the 18th episode, Patrick and Kat consider taking their relationship to the next level, meaning having sex. As they're about to, as per the MO, they get into this huge argument and end up breaking up instead. And Joey makes it onto the biggest poser. Bianca has her friends over for a dinner party to patch things up with Dawn and Cameron and during the dinner party Michael surprises everyone by admitting he's gay. I haven't got up the nerve to tell Cameron yet. Don't worry. I can keep a secret. He's gay? Gay? Gay, 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 gay.
Also, Bianca reveals how she's feeling unstable and unsure about the relationship with him going off to New York. But he does what he does best and he reaffirms her. I'm sorry, but Bianca and um, Joey are taking it. I just love the relationship. The only thing the show's gonna change is my address and hair color. Not the way I feel about you. I love you, Bianca, whether I'm in San Diego, New York, or Japan. Apparently they go cuckoo for blondes in Japan. Wait. Did you just say that you love me? Duh. Oh my god. I love you too. Um, also in the episode, Walter and Miss Tharp, the girls' guidance counselor, have their first date. And like finally he's getting a life of his own. Ugh, about time. Oh, it's Darlene. Should I let it ring one more time and not be too eager? Or what if she hangs up? <laughs> Delaney, are you there? In the 19th episode, Patrick is so cold to her. That's why Loki, I'm not sure if I ship them because he, I don't know, he doesn't do enough for me. It's mean. He acts like he doesn't even exist. And then he doesn't fight for her. Ew. I swear he wants her dead. If that was me, <laughs> she's a better woman than me for sure. Because if that was me, I'd be having daily meltdowns and screaming at his window every night. <laughs> like, what do you mean you ain't gonna fight for me? It's not making sense. Um, also, Bianca is missing Joey, and as they share one phone in the, po the biggest poser house, that's her biggest priority, which gets her into trouble a few times in the episode. The girls find out about their dad and missed up, and though initially taken by surprise, they eventually come around and support it. Miss Tharp and Bianca bond as they seem to understand each other, sharing similar views on boys and fashion and stuff like that. But things take a turn when she blurs the boundaries and expects Miss Tharp to help her get out of trouble in school. Being young and a brat, she asks her dad to break up with her, but she eventually realizes she was wrong and being selfish and um, supports them again. Was? You mean you're not being selfish anymore? Listen, I know how it feels to want to talk to someone so badly it hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I call her? Kat begins her Buddhist journey and wants a change of scenery and chooses to study abroad in Nepal, which she hopes will help her will help get her mind off Patrick. Ugh, I hate him. How can he already be moving on in the same school that she goes to? She can see you! <sighs> As she learns more information, she realizes that she doesn't really want to go and um, lets Patrick know about the trip in hopes that he would ask her to stay but when, when he doesn't this really hurts her and we see a more vulnerable side of her and look he's kind of nice Joey! <laughs> Don't Darlene, hi, it's me Walter. Yeah, we're back. This scene is lurky quite sad. Oh bless her. And that's why that man sucks. You know what I take it back? I don't like the toxic love. Fuck him. Fuck Patrick and fuck Patrick again. I don't want to go. I like indoor plumbing. I don't want to forage for roots or wear snow pants. And... And what? And he didn't try to stop me. I'm stopping you. Fuck Patrick again! Look here, I might add a fuck Patrick counter because I've had enough. Also, I like that this scene is kind of similar to the scene from the movie where it's like, I hate that you didn't call and I hate that you did this and I hate that you did that. And yeah, it's kind of emotional. If you haven't seen the movie, honestly, go watch it now. Bianca, I'm sorry. I can't help myself. Chastity, I told you that. Instructive confidence. Stay out of it, Christy Yamaguchi. <laughs> At least I'm not a slur who slept with Joey on the third date. Oh, and FYI, he also said that you were so bad in bed that he faked it. <laughs> in the final episode, Chastity decides to name Bianca Vice Head Cheerleader, displacing Michelle. However, there's been a coup brewing and Chastity loses her position. Who are up against? I am this school's Tony Soprano, Bianca! Oh, we are taking them down. Though okay with it at first and supporting it, Dawn and Bianca end up feeling bad about it for her and side with Chastity, sacrificing their place on the squad. If you don't let Chastity back on the squad, then Dawn and I quit. <laughs> okay, bye. But it turns out it was the wrong choice to make as Chastity informs them on her decision to leave school. But we just quit for you. 
Also, in the latest episode of The Biggest Poser, it looks like Joey might have cheated on um, Bianca. Even though it's pretty clear and obvious that she jumped on him. So the suspense isn't really built for me, but go off. Meanwhile, Kat runs for class president against Blank to increase her chances of getting into Brown. When Kat speaks rights to Tabitha, the facts to Blank's campaign and creates a video that causes um, Kat to lose the students' respect and, it, and the election. And after being humiliated, Patrick comes to her side to comfort her. Finally, he does something. Ugh. Lucky bare minimum for me, but we'll take all we can get, right? <laughs> Um, when Walt returns early from a conference and intends to comfort Kat at a lost election, he discovers Kat and Patrick in, po in a post-sex position in her bed. And that is where these motherfuckers left us with the cliffhanger. <laughs> Guys, you don't understand. It was just getting good. They were cooking. They were cooking. I don't know how they didn't see the potential. It still drives me crazy. Can I ask you a favor? Don't break my heart, okay? Okay. Can I ask you a favor? What is it? I hear someone can use a hug. <laughs> I'm not leaving. I keep hoping that they'll announce, um, they'll announce it and try and, I don't know, continue from where they left off. But I feel like it might, it might be too late now. But never say never. You never know. Even though I am still so pissed and mad at them ending it like this, I've got to love this episode for giving us this masterpiece. Now, watch the whole thing, because it's a masterpiece. My name is Cat Frizzy, I'm from the Midwest. Now I'm chilling up in SoCal with Patrick was best. No, but guys, take a minute and deep exactly where they left us off. It is insanity. They should be behind bars. They will pay for their crimes because well, it was getting so good. Oh, ABC, you will crumble. You will pay for your crimes. It's ridiculous. Thankfully, though, the show creator does provide some answers on what they had planned for the next season. And I think that's why I'm even more pissed because it sounds like things were just about to get more interesting. There was so much potential in an entertainment weekly article he addresses the cliffhangers so the first and obvious cliffhanger to be addressed was what would have happened after walter walked in on cat and patrick together in bed he said surprisingly the incident wasn't going to drive a wedge between the couple i really wanted to keep cat and patrick together as a couple because i think their struggle to become closer is more interesting than them apart <laughs> he gets it the plan for season two was to have walter walking in on them up the stakes of that. He was going to demand to meet Patrick's parents, which was going to introduce his mother and his stepfather and let us get a greater insight into Patrick's home life, which we were going to keep stressful and not ideal. Why are you in therapy? You were right. Sleep eating is from stress. Caused by my stepfather. He's a jackass. Thank you for telling me. So what's in the package? A snuggie. <laughs> We wouldn't want a blanket with arms. We introduced the concept um, in the first 10 and we're going to see why Patrick's home life is a stressful place for him. Ugh, oh, guys, there was so much potential. <sighs> he continues saying, this idea with Patrick was going to have conflict with Kat. She's this driven girl who wants to go to college and sees herself being successful. And Patrick, we're gonna really explore who he's like as a guy. College isn't his future, that's not who he is. He's not a student. He doesn't know what he wants to do, but he just knows that he doesn't wanna to go to college. Her mission, of course, for him was, of course you're going to college. She was really going to sort of push him, and this would have turned him off because 
that's trying to change him. I didn't sell out. I'm just thinking big picture. I want to go to a first-rate college so I can get a degree in social policy and change the world. The real world, not high school. You sound like one of them already. I think the end of season two was going to sort of end in a place of frustration between the two. Where she's like, I want the best for you. And he's like, who says you know what's best? Nah, you guys hearing this though. He continues saying, we were going to develop a friendship between Walter and Patrick, where Walter becomes a fatherish figure to Patrick. He's never really had sons, and Patrick um, doesn't really have a father. So it was going to be a nice thing, so that when Kat is on the house with Patrick, she finds that her father still has this relationship with him. In seeing Patrick's family and learning more about him, Walter really becomes sympathetic, and sees that Patrick is a good guy who just had a tough road. <laughs> Big sigh. Cliffhanger number three. So in, in the end of the last episode, um, Patrick asks Kat a favour and unfortunately pa Walter walks in before he can get the, his words out so we never find out what he, what he was going to say. The showrunner was hesitant to give an answer, choosing to leave it open to interpretation rather than disappoint people. Then he admits they didn't really know. They were like, we'll figure that out when we get to season two. <laughs> and he's so real for that. With the way the season ended, he would have said, something like oh don't break my heart either and she says okay because that's how the series should have ended in the long term cliffhanger number two so he says where there was a happy cat and patrick there's blank so hmm he was gonna stick around interesting um the article continues yes the british thorn in cat's side was gonna stick around the showrunner says i was excited to explore who his family was blank serves as a counterpoint to patrick because he's ambitious he wants to go to college he's a thinker not a doer like patrick we were going to evolve out that relationship and also show that through blank and his mother as cat had this connection to her mother and what she was like which was going to be a place for her to find out what her mom would be like in a similar time in her life i know i know it's complicated which is ironic because leather jacket man is so simple what do you mean by that well i'm just guessing here but i can't see the two of you sitting around debating offshore drilling look we debate lots of stuff just stop talking about him before you before what before i tell you what you already know you're too good for him when asked if this means we would see the love triangle he's not really sure he really liked the actor who played bank he liked the idea of cat struggling with whether or not patrick can fit into her goals in life he liked that idea and as much as everyone hates love triangles sometimes you have to give the character a choice blank was going to be that choice but they hadn't completely figured out um how they were going to do it because they didn't want to get into a situation where it felt like a predictable love triangle which makes a lot of sense so with cliffhanger number four after bianca sees joey kiss another girl on the biggest poser after getting evicted from the poser house joey comes back to school but he seems to have lost his spark. This would set stage for more of a earned Bianca, Cameron, Joey love triangle. While having trouble dealing with the new Joey, Bianca would turn to Cameron. Apparently what they always talked about with Bianca was to see what happens when you genuinely love two people. They really wanted to build on that. And okay, again, predictable love triangle, but that sounds interesting. Like after all this time he's been chasing her, she's like, hmm, maybe I could actually love Cameron. I would have been, I would have liked to see that. I would like to see it. With cliffhanger number five, and this is about Chastity. So, um, the last episode we saw that Chastity said she was moving to a new school, and she was really going to go because the actress asked to be relieved of a contract so she could explore new opportunities. But you can't just leave us. I will always be just a text away. Air hug. <laughs> I'll miss you, bestie. I don't know how you guys feel about um, all the cliffhangers, but for me, it would have made great TV, and I'm. It has so much potential and it's just even worse because The Secret Life of an American Teenager got six, six, six seasons and that show is so trash. <laughs> I think that's what even hurts the most, like six seasons. I will avenge you. At ABC Family, you will pay for your crimes. You will crumble and that's okay. But yeah, that's it. Um, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Have you even seen this show? Have you ever heard of it? I don't know. I feel like I'm the only one who actually watched it because no one really talks about it. Um, probably that's why it got cancelled. <laughs> but yeah, now that I've got, given a recap, does it like sound like something you actually go find and binge? Because I, I definitely um, recommend it. The first half of the season is kind of slow and kind of boring, but, but things pick up from around episode 7 and that's where, for me, it had me. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of romance in TV shows, so the relationship with Patrick and Kat and then Joey and um, Bianca, seeing it develop was fun for me. In the grand scheme of things, I don't think this show would have been 
as much of a classic as the Vampire Diaries or Gossip Girl because it's pretty stale in comparison and didn't stray too far out of the box. But they had so much potential. They were cooking and season two sounded like growth and increased stakes. It was definitely better. I will say it again for the third time. It was definitely better than Secret Life of American Teenager. That show was awesome. I don't care what anyone says. And bear in mind, I can get into trash TV. I can do basic TV, but that ugh, six seasons, really six seasons. I right, say less. As usual, I said it earlier. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments. Um, leave a like, a share, subscribe if you haven't already, and yeah, I appreciate the support, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.